While some investors have been focused on the performance of tech stocks like NVIDIA, our feature guest today says if you're looking for a pocket of strength in the markets, one sector is really standing out, and it's not technology. Joining us now with more, Ben Gosick, Managing Director and Portfolio Manager with TD Asset Management. Ben, always a pleasure to have you. Always a pleasure to have your insights and your charts with us as well. Oh, I appreciate you having me. Uh, even brought another new tie. <laughs> I only got one more new tie, so only one more episode for the rest of the year, I guess. No, no, no. We'll make sure. We'll have you back on more than that. We'll get you your ties if you need to. Let's talk about markets. As I was saying, they hit new highs last week. Uh, people, and I know this uh, you have a this is a sore point for you. People keep saying, well, it's got to be the Magnificent Seven. It's got to be tech. Look what's happening in tech. Let's talk about who you see as the real generals in this market rally. Well, I think, you know, we've been, it's almost getting a little tired. Like, we've been talking about, home builders and trucking stocks and the, the companies that make the trucks for the trucking stocks. And we've been talking a lot about industrials. Um, and yet, it's still all about the Magnificent Seven, the Magnificent Four. Um, but I just wanted to, again, just hammer down the point, re-emphasize that I do think industrials are sort of the real sort of generals within this um, bull market cycle that we're in right now. All right, so you bring charts to illustrate your point. It's just not words. you got something to show us. So let's uh, start going through them. Tell us uh, what, what we're seeing in these uh, graphs. Okay, so the first chart that we're looking at is one that we have looked at before. Um, so this would be the S&P 500 industrials, and we put that over the S&P 500. So as, again, you're not looking at a price chart. You're looking at a ratio chart. I really like, I'm addicted to ratio charts. They really tell you where the pockets of strength and weakness are in the market. And I would liken it to a tug of war. So if our chart's going up and to the right, it just means that our numerator is outperforming our denominator. I know people probably weren't expecting they were gonna have to do fractions <laughs> for their lunch hour, but they are gonna have to do it. Um, the reason, uh, what we've done with this particular chart is we made it equal weight numerator, equal weight denominator. The reason why I did that, Greg, is because the top 10 stocks in the S&P 500 industrials make up most of the index and most of them have been underperforming, while the bottom 60 in, those, in, that, in that area has been outperforming. So we just had to make a small tweak there just to show that there is massive strength going on in industrials. We're in an industrial super cycle. It's led by you know, construction activity. We have uh, reshoring, onshoring. Um, there's the Infrastructure Act, the CHIPS Act, you name it, there's a, a boom uh, in industrials. That's interesting when you talk about sort of uh, getting an equal weight going, because if you do think of some of the big industrial names that are capturing the attention, the Magnificent Seven capturing a lot of attention, and they say, well, let's talk about an industrial stock, and you say, well, Boeing is capturing a lot of attention, but not for the right reasons. Is, it, is this key here to start looking beneath the surface of all those headlines and saying there's other industrial stocks in the world? Yeah, the reason why I, you know, this Magnificent Seven's been this bee in my bonnet, I get how our indices are driven by the market caps, and these stocks have really big market caps, so when they move, you know, that moves the index. I get it. But it's hidden the fact that we've had many stocks work in this market. And the other thing I would argue, too, is, you know, three out of the four Magnificent Seven stocks are underperforming, yet you've just said that the market's been making new highs. Mm -hmm. So is it the... And something else must be doing some lifting. Right. And so we have this other, that same feature when we have the Magnificent Seven at the top of the market is the same issue that we're having in the industrial sector, um, where, yes, companies like a Boeing or a UPS or a Raytheon or a Honeywell are large in comparison to many industrial companies, and their performance is distorting people's views about how strong industrials have been performing. All right, if we're talking about some of the smaller companies in the space, maybe it leads us nicely into the Russell 2000. I think you have a chart there as well to show us some things. Yes, and the reason why I pick on the Russell 2000 <laughs> is lots of people keep saying this is an unhealthy market. Look at how the S&P 500 has been performing, and the Russell 2000 can't keep up. And we're talking about Russell 2000 being small, medium, capitalized companies. Um, and this is where it's like, well, do you want the Russell 2000 or do you want the parts that are really working in the Russell 2000? And here we are again with industrials. Um, this is the same setup. So numerator is the Russell 2000 industrials. We put it over the Russell 2000. What's really impressive to me about this chart, Greg, the Russell, so the S&P 500 industrials, I think take off around you know, spring, summer of 2022, which is roughly where we say the market made its new bull market. But what's really impressive about looking at Russell 2000 industrials over Russell 2000 
they start getting lift off in 2021, so well ahead of the S&P 500. So I would say the real story, the red, real headline is not S&P 500 is doing this, Russell 2000 is doing this, therefore we have an unhealthy market, is the industrials are crushing it, and they're crushing it for the same reasons. Some of the best stocks would be construction stocks, engineering stocks. Um, again, we have the building materials, the aerospace, defense. So all the same themes that we're seeing at the, at the let's say, the large cap index, we're seeing it at the small cap index. Um, and it's, it's just, again, not being talked about. All right, so we've shown an example about the S&P 500. We've gone through the Russell 2000, did your work there. What, what if we bring it closer to home? I mean, we have engineering companies and construction companies in this country. Yeah, and great rail companies. Mm -hmm. And so this is not just a U.S. phenomenon, large cap, small cap. You take the S&P TSX industrials, you put it over the S&P TSX, and lo and behold, we have another bull market. Um, so this is a global phenomenon. Um, and again, not again. we could look at Canada and we can spend all of our time talking about banks and energy companies and gold companies. And meanwhile, uh, again, our industrial companies are also doing outperformance. Again, all driven by the same secular trends that we're seeing. A right, global phenomenon. I think we need to look at the EFI as well. Yes, I mean, why stop in North America <laughs> when we can travel the world uh, and the world's a pretty exciting place. Uh, and so, yes, people talk about Germany being in a recession and this issue here and this issue there. And again, European industrials are crushing it. Um, but EFI industrials, so that would include J Japan as well, um, take that, put that over the MSCI EFI. So think of, again, develop world X um, North America. And again, we're seeing the same trends. Um, you know, a really big you know, uh, marginal mover, mover in all of this would be the data center. So yes, we have talked about infrastructure, CHIPS Act. Um, there is reshoring, onshoring. I think a big, um, a big slow moving train is our data centers. Uh, so data centers require, you need um, utilities, you need power lines, you need um, uh, machinery, you need equipment, like all this, all this build out uh, is creating industrial activity, uh, and we're seeing that in the stocks today. All right, so for the charge you bought with us, if you did your work, we're up and to the right. That's the extent of my technical analysis. Up and to the right, what challenges uh, this trend? So What's the biggest risk? The big risk that I'm focused on right now, so again, right now it's a benefit. Um, and, you know, I was talking about how the data center is, I'd say is you know, marginally adding to everyone's books in terms of orders, and so you know, fine, let's build these out, and that's great. And at some point, we have to digest that. Um, we're not there yet, but when we digest it, you know, those orders are going to peak out. And so that's the sort of what I'm looking at right now is just monitoring the flow of the data center, monitoring the flow of those orders. Uh, and then when we get to that second derivative, that third derivative, when, when things slow down, you know, we could see some derailment. Um, people talk about um, the election cycle and you know, maybe one candidate is pro this and pro that. Um, I will say in terms of, you know, I'd say the key bill here would be the Inflation Reduction Act. You know, that was approved by Congress, signed by the president. Um, you know, I've been, you know, I've, you know, there are many times people come in and say there's, you know, a new administration. You know, the parties can't agree with themselves and this creates a lot of jobs. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of talk. I don't know if anyone would repeal any of that type of stuff. So um, that would be a sort of low probability, high impact risk. Um, but that is one that, that, that gets talked about. 